the magic of the dragon. How much can you strive for? Many different people kind of question the same thing. How much can they personally strive for? And that is always the business there. And I always say, stride along like a dragon. Stride along like you just don't care. And that's what I have to say. That is what's to say. And if anybody questions that, then eh, so what? Because if you actually get into the ancient thoughts of dragons, you know, then you will understand the very mythical basis of the dragon. It's also a Chinese birth sign, too. It is also the connection to a serpentine-like entity or animal. A very powerful and wise animal. Um, a very, very, very powerful, but yet one of the some of the most wise creatures that has ever been you, you see they either either were on the earth the planet earth um or they were kind of uh mythological so once you understand how magical the dragon is then you learn to be nourished like a dragon be nourished and created like a dragon and sometimes you're born into an egg and you have to crack yourself free and you just people you're just ready to sprout everybody on this planet earth is their own dragon ready to sprout from their egg and uh that's what i wanted to talk about because real magic is into the potency of such magic and the dragons were heavy magic users um if you don't know something about magic or you're kind of confused you should always kind of stretch out to a dragon guide um a, a mythical dragon guide and i think uh there are four for each uh each element and I want to further this in another video I want to further that in another video so when I wanted to talk about the uh, etymology of a dragon it originally came from the Greek word draken or draken and uh, it formed from into the old French word dragon but yeah so and Draken is basically Draco, Nin. And it's Draco. Uh, and that's a constellation in the stars, is the ancient old dragon. And uh, Skyrim wasn't lying. Because in uh, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, dragons are depicted as a forceful entity, but also through a specific character, a very wise entity. And it's also very true that they spoke their own language. Um, if you look up at the stars, take pictures of the sky, or if you look up certain images of the stars above, sometimes you will see cosmic entities, which are dragon. And those dragons are cosmic beings are and protectors of the galaxy. And so on and so forth. But actually... The very first idea of the dragon must have been the first sighting of a pterodactyl, if you believe it or not. And, you know, the resemblance to, of the dragon to the pterodactyl is astounding. Um, mythology always tends to be created by creative human minds, and that is how the magic of it is. Um, is creative thinking and that is how things go um, but there's also the idea like I said before that dragons 
that dragons were more creative deities. Um, sorry, not creative. Um, more cosmic deities. I mean, they are harbingers of creativity, sure, and wisdom. But there's also the idea that they are cosmic entities. You know, guardians of the galaxy, that type of stuff. So, yeah. Men has always created their deities first and made them more believable second. There's the idea that Prometheus brought the light to humanity, you know, which was a Greek Titan type character. And um, that could have been created by a tribe, and that's how that legend started. So, and there's also definitely um, Ocean, which is actually a goddess. Um, actually the goddess of light, I believe. The beast of a dragon is easier Oops. to look up more. But that's what it is. The beast of a dragon is an easy figure to look up to. Um, totally.